Hello. In this video, we'll take a look at using the CPP API, and we'll talk about what CPP stands for, for managing virtual machine offers in Azure Marketplace. In a previous video that we'll link from the description of this one, we talked about using the Partner Center Ingestion API for managing Azure application offer types, such as solution templates and managed apps. And even though Partner Center is the UI in which we manage many offer types, as we will see, the API for managing virtual machines and some other offer types is not the Partner Center API, but the CPP, Cloud Partner Portal, quote unquote, older portal API. Even though there is no UI there anymore, that API is still the same for managing virtual machines. And we'll talk about that. So. Another way to think about it is which partner, which API should we use? Partner Center API or CPP API? And the answer, it depends on the offer type. So what we talked about last time was API uh, partner that Microsoft.com, the ingestion API, it's for Azure application offers because it's under the uh, Azure apps section of the docs. And the cloud partner that Azure.com, the CPP API, is for VM offers and a bunch of other offer types that are less frequent. And this is the older API, but it needs to use this API version. Okay. So let's take a look at the partner center to understand where things fit. So in the partner center, when uh, we are looking in this new UI where all the offers are, we can see some measure, uh, some offer types of type Azure app application. And when, again, we saw previously how to manage those using the Partner Center Ingestion API. We see some software as a service offers, a managed service offer, and a virtual machine. Right now, we are curious about where to manage this offer. This is its ID or its name, an alias, et cetera. So let's open this offer and glance at it because we'll use this UI to explore the API itself. And then also, let's just take a look at this list of uh, things that we see. And as you can see, the Azure application we discussed, for that we need to use the Partner Center API. And in this discussion, we're focusing specifically on the Azure Virtual Machine Offer, which is managed through a different API today. Not to say that in the future, they will not be all under Partner Center API, but that is sometime in the future currently we need to use the CPP API to manage this. So where do we find the documentation about CPP API? Uh, Cloud Partner Portal API Overview is the page. And here it's talking about the migration that happened of offers from the old Cloud Partner Portal to the Partner Center. And it says that even though the migration happened, the API, the old API, will continue to function for virtual machine offer types with small changes, okay? And we can see uh, how to use it. So what, what do we need to do to use this? We again need an authentication mechanism. An authentication mechanism is basically our service principle that we create in the Azure Active Directory tenant, the same way as for Partner Center API. We're gonna use the same princi service principle actually. We're going to then add the service principle to our Partner Center and we're going to use it there. So this UI is actually not relevant, uh, but I will show you where we created it. And then we're going to use the get access token. And the key point here will be again, right here, the cloud partner azure.com as the um, resource for this API. So le let's take a look at what this means. So in our Active Directory, we created a, an application. I called it this app one. We will need its client ID and client secret that we uh, grabbed before. And we'll also will need to know its tenant, the Active Directory in which this application is defined or the service principle is defined. That's number one. Number two, in the partner center, just like with the uh, Partner Center API, we needed to add this application 
to be able to access our offer. So basically we add Azure application and we can see this application is already added and registered. So we will be able to use it to get tokens. Now what we're going to do is going to switch to um, Postman collection over here that I start creating called CPP API uh, to see how we get the token and then what are some of the API methods we can use for managing virtual machine offers. This API is actually a little bit simpler than the partner center ingestion API that we saw in the other video that has all these methods and we'll actually need to use one of them. You'll see why. But let's let's go get the token first. So for getting the token, we're going to issue a request to the Active Directory tenant of ours. And we I'm going to rotate this secret after the video, but we're going to use a client credential grant with the client ID of the service principal, the secret, and most importantly, the resource cloudpartner.azure.com and counter example it with the one we used in the previous video. We were using API the partner Microsoft.com, so different API input. Okay. So now let's make this request. And what we'll do is we'll store it into the CPP access token variable. So we're going to run this. This is our token, get issued. It's alive for one uh, for one hour. And we're going to start using it. So let's see what we have. So in the API documentation, and also on our page, we have a list of offers, right? So this is list of offers. Uh, and we saw how we can list this list of offers using the Partner Center API before. Let's see, can we get the list of offers using the Cloud Partner Portal, the CPP API? So there's an offers type, we need a publisher ID. Hmm. What is our publisher ID? Um, it is a little bit uh, tricky to figure this one out. Uh, so what your publisher ID is, it's going to be the part that's right here. Uh, this is the publisher ID. And how else you can tell what your publisher ID is, is if you are looking at the different offers and you have some offers that are maybe in preview, if you look in the preview on the bottom there in the URL, right here, you can see this is your uh, publisher ID. That's what we need. So basically, I need that part for the offer. So right there, right? Let, let's put something not real just to get a sense and we'll need authorization. Uh, so this is the token that we obtained just now. And no, notice it will basically say, hey, uh, this doesn't work because I put an in, incorrect uh, partner ID, publisher ID. Now I put a correct publisher ID in offers and notice I'm getting an empty array. And what is strange is that here in this user interface, I have at least one virtual machine, even though the rest are applications that shouldn't be coming up in that API, I'm getting nothing. And the reason I'm getting nothing back is because the way this API works is it will only return offers that were previously pushed to preview at least. And my offer was never pushed because this account cannot push to, uh, to preview and you'll see that later. So the draft offers are not returned directly by the API. And that's something to keep in mind. That's why it is empty for this call. Okay, does that mean we are stuck? Not really. What we can do is we can use the partner center ingestion API, get our token, as we did it before, separate one, because it's for a separate resource, and then we can get products, right? So we can get our list of products from here. And what we care about is not the GUID ID, but rather this name, or this value over here. And where else can we see this? We can see the same thing if we look at the offer and we click on the offer and we look at the offer setup, I think right here, we will get this alias. This is the ID we want to use. And then we can see specific individual offer just fine using CPP API. So get specific offer. So how does that gonna work for us? Right here is our publisher ID. And then this is going to be our virtual machine offer ID with the right application version. How do I know the application version? If we look at the documentation, we can see the application version described to us. 
So that's very important to use this application version. I'll show you the other one that's available, but that's not what we want to use. And it gives us back this nice, massive JSON output. And in the old API, everything is put into the same response. So basically, the offer itself, also it shows us where it is in the new portal that it was migrated there. It's waiting for review. But all of its information, you know, lead management and other things are all inside of this JSON, including our plans. If you remember from another video that we did with Azure Applications, these were called variants, product variants, and they would be under separate API calls in the part, Partner Center API. But here, they're all here. We can see the plan, we can see the countries of availability, and we can see the subscriptions that are whitelisted and everything else, including the OS VHD of the offer that we will look into and see the title and description. So it is extremely, uh, convenient that it's all in one shot, but it's also somewhat dangerous because everything is in one JSON. That's where the changes would be made. Great. So let's take a look um, at the UI of this offer. And if we look at plan overview and we click on the plan and we look at its title, description, etc., then we can basically find the same components of that here. And this information is under the VM images. So what is that? That lives under technical configuration. And it's actually right here, right? So that's, that's what we get. Perfect. What else can we do with this API? So we can see the offer. We'll look into how we make changes to the offer soon. But for now, we saw the offer. Let's all, we can also have an API for getting offer status. What does that mean? It means we want to see, was it ever published or not? And it shows us, nope, it has never been published. And this is where the status of publishing would be shown in this API. Perfect. We could also get the submissions. If this was ever published in the past, this will not work right now. But if it was, it would return to us when it was published. OK? And then we also have a method that says, hey, let's do a post to this offer and let's push it to publish. So let's send this request and see what happens. Basically, this is the same thing as going in the portal and saying push this offer to um, push this offer review and publish. So let's click this link and take a look. So what do we see here? We see everything. And then in my account, my account is not verified. It's test account. And you can see I cannot press the publish button because it has this error message. Well, let's see what this validation came up with. So if we look through this validation error message, you will probably, we will probably see the same, uh, the same error. This plans mark stop so before published. And we're going to have the same basically description of why this offer cannot be published because it is uh, my my account is not really publishable great so that's what we got we got an unsuccessful status and inside of this we have the error message describing that okay um, let's actually take a look your account needs to be vetted in order to publish right and this is basically the description and this is the same thing we see in the portal here perfect so it's good that we couldn't bypass that validation through the api so let's see how do we update an offer so to update an offer we would need to do a get against the offer get the offer and then take all of this json that we get back okay make some modifications to it and do a post so this is the same json what i'm going to do here i'm going to do two two small changes i'm going to put a one zero at the end of the my vhd image to break this url to not build valid and i'm going to say here summary updated description updated and we are going to do a post and after we did the post and it came back it came back you know with the mirror echo output and let's do a get again 
just scroll down and see if the API made the change correctly. There's no reason to believe it didn't. Let's just double check. So we can see our change to the URL happen and our change to description happen. Moment of truth is checking how does the UI look like. So in a plan overview, we do a quick look and we see the changes, updated, updated. And most interestingly, our configuration now says, hmm, uh, there is an error. What is this error? Well, it's not liking that I added 10 over here because this URL became invalid. And this is what it's complaining, that the, the you know this URL is now invalid. Let's go, and we can fix it now in the UI just as well as through the API. So this is how we do a retrieving offer. We cannot retrieve draft offers, but we can get a specific draft offer, which is great. We can add or modify an offer uh, using taking the JSON, making some changes and doing a put like that. We can get an offer status. We can publish an offer and we can uh, cancel operation or go live for pushing it to production. One interesting thing to consider, there's some considerations uh, in this documentation talking about API versioning and talking about concurrency control uh, because those are big JSON documents being posted around, so you may want to use the tags. And there is one more that I think is very interesting is this page is long, but uh, let's take a look. How do I update images, uh, uh, you know, the graphical images? that are part of the offer. So let's take a look at what I'm referring to. We have an offer listing and we have these images right here. How do I sub update them? So basically what it says for the images or logos, you share them by uploading to an accessible location and then including the URI in the put request, the system will detect these and they will upload them there. Same thing, what categories could be. So this documentation, even though it's still talking about Cloud Partner Portal API, is still relevant for Azure Virtual Machine offers. That's what we that's what we see. Let's take a look at one more offer type, just as an example. Managed service offer type, this one right here, is also uh, possible to, to use through this API. So again, if I just change this to that offer, and we will see that that will come back and it will show us the data. And there's a few other offer types that are not Azure applications, but let me see what happens when you try to do something that's not possible with this API. So this API takes a second. So it came back and you can see this was the managed service offer with completely different shape of configuration, et cetera, but this API worked. What about can we use it to manage the Azure application itself? So let's grab Azure application ID here and try that and we'll see an interesting behavior. We will see it says, nope, we cannot do this because Azure application is not supported for shimming. Basically the intermediary, this new, this wrapper uh, shim around the APIs is supporting only certain offer types. And because Azure application can be managed through the other API that we discussed last video, Partner Center API, Ingestion API, it cannot be used here. And let's see, what about the SaaS offer? Can this be used using CPP API? And we will see it also cannot be, but what can? Virtual machine, managed app, and some of the other offer types can. But this video is specifically for virtual machine, and we touched on all of it. Uh, uh, interestingly, uh, as you can see, there is so much less API calls to consider with the CPP API than the Partner Center Ingestion API because Partner Center breaks the offer into modules and different pieces, and that's why we had to go through all of that. Watch the other video to learn more. Uh, and but CPP API is simple. And the conclusion uh, of what we are saying is simply this. Um, if we have an Azure application, we're gonna use the API Partner Center, same credentials could be used, just different resource ID, resource uh, uh, for scoping the token. And here we're gonna have different resources for scoping the token. 
and that's for VM offers and a few other offer types. And just to summarize, this video was about using CPP Cloud Partner Portal API for managing virtual machine offers in Azure Marketplace. And if in the future, uh, Partner Center API gets improved, it will likely support virtual machines as well. But until then, CPP API is the place to manage those offers. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.